I'm Bob Emser, and I'm a sculptor boat builder. I became really interested in doing uh, large-scale work early on. That actually started with an exhibit that was in Chicago called Navy Pier. And I was fortunately one of the beginning artists that was invited to do that. And it was really one of my first uh, public sculptures. And as it arrived by the water, and the piece really had a very nautical feeling to it, though I didn't really see it until it was actually in place. I ultimately ended up directing this show that was on Navy Pier for a couple of years. It was a really good start for me uh, as a public sculptor. You know, it was, I was afforded the opportunity to travel a lot, to, to go a lot of places. I have had sculptures in Australia, uh, Norway, um, in Italy. I've got probably 20 or 30 public sculptures throughout the United States. And interestingly, all of them tend to be by water. Well, the, the switch from, from making sculpture to building boats happened, you know, well, just how life happens. Things are either roadblocks in your way and you gotta figure out how to go around them or whatever. But I had a, a bit of a break from making sculpture uh, via a motorcycle accident. So I was basically, didn't do anything for quite a while. And then when I started coming back to it, uh, to really be honest, I just was tired of the art world. And I was tired of hustling for commissions and having to please clients. And I thought, I'm at a point in my career now, I should be able to do what I wanna do. It's interesting to me in that as I, you know, when I see images of um, you know, boats in, in process. It literally could take that boat and put it in a gallery and people would think it is the most fantastic piece of sculpture ever. You know? And so there's just this really close relationship, I think, to art, sculpture in particular, and boat building. So I have this beautiful studio, so I thought, you know, this is a nice boat building studio. It just seems like a really natural connection in that my, my sculptures look like boats, and that what I've learned as I've studied more of the practice of ship writing is um, that I've been doing that all along. I've, I've always lofted, uh, lofting is what uh, is, is when you take the plans and you make them larger, life size, and then build from there. And so I've always done that. I've always you know designed my sculptures and then lofted them and made molds and, you know, uh, built ribs and skin and just exactly the way you would build a boat. So this studio is in Eureka, Illinois, which is a small town in central Illinois. It's here because I taught at Eureka College. It's a very economical place to work from. So, And I built this studio oh, about 17 years ago. Um, I had had a large studio in Chicago in a warehouse I had a small studio in Eureka, and I thought, I've got this backwards. I need a small studio in Chicago and a big studio in Eureka. Uh, and so, essentially, I found this piece of property and then built the studio um, in the fall of uh, 2001. It's been one of those things where I think this is truth for any artist, is that you have to have a place that is just for the making of art. And this is not attached to my house, this piece of property, so it's like I have to, you know, leave home and go to work, and it's a, you're, so you're really on purpose about it, so. And it's a studio I designed and built myself, so it, uh, it's, it's fun. One of the things I did as I was uh, thinking about this, I thought oh, it would be great to take a class in boat building. So I found this place up in the uh, <clears throat> Upper Peninsula of Michigan, right off of Lake Huron in uh, Cedarville, Michigan, and it is the Great Lakes Boat Building School. And they were offering in the summer these week-long classes that you basically began a boat, and they got the majority of it finished within that week. How that was done is they used a kit from uh, Chesapeake Lightcraft, 
The great thing about the kit was that you saved a lot of time. You didn't have to do any of the lofting. The pieces were all cut, CNC cut out, so they're nice and clean. And the cost of the kit, quite honestly, was only pennies more than what it cost to actually round up all of these materials yourself. And then you would have still had to cut them all out and not to the precision that this was. For people that are beginning, I think it's a really great thing to do is to, to buy a kit. The name of the boat is a Tenderly Dinghy. Essentially, dinghies are small little boats and um, the tenderly part, they're yacht tenders, so they move uh, material back and forth from shore to the yacht. I really liked this particular boat because I was looking for something that had kind of a classic boat design for my first boat. It's uh, a process called stitch and glue. They're basically sheets of plywood that are then stitched together with little copper wires. And as you tighten those wires up, the hull of that boat gets nice and tight. And then you epoxy it. So you put in epoxy fillers and glue and then coat it glass cloth and epoxy. So it's basically a fiberglass on the inside and outside. So it, it becomes a very strong uh, structure. It's, uh, it's really great for beginners because you don't need to do any lofting. You don't need to build any molds. You can pretty much take it out of the, out of the box and, and get started. And you can take something and adapt it. So let's build a boat.